Good morning and welcome. We are so glad that you joined us uh, here this morning. We're going to be starting the service off a little differently uh, today. Timmy, our Wadsworth campus uh, worship pastor, isn't here with us today, but he has prepared something along with the Wadsworth campus worship team uh, that is really cool. And so we're going to kick off with that. Uh, check out this song. Hallelujah In the presence of my enemy I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody
Wasn't that a cool way to uh, start the service? Uh, it was great to see those uh, faces uh, again. Again, we're, we're so glad that you're here with us this morning. We're going to continue in worship, but there's a few things that you need to know about uh, before we continue with the service. The first is, is that this is a special Sunday. This is graduation Sunday, so we're going to be honoring uh, our graduates from, from all of our campuses uh, here this Sunday. And during the pre-show, if you were tuned into that, we played a video that honored all of our specific graduates. And if you missed that, uh, don't worry, we're going to be playing it at the end of the service. So make sure you stick around to the very end uh, so you can catch that video. Uh, and also, uh, along with that, today is our graduation, uh, our, our seniors parade. And, and so that's going to be happening today at 3 o'clock at our Doylestown campus. And so we're going to have 20-some graduates lined up in the parking lot. And what we want you to do, you know, whether you know a graduate uh, or not, is to come out uh, in your cars and to line up and to drive by and to wave at them and honk for them and to congratulate them on, on their accomplishment of graduating, especially since they didn't get to celebrate it uh, in, in the way, in the traditional way that we all maybe got to celebrate it when we graduated from high school. So make sure you don't miss out on that. It's a great day for it, three o'clock here at the Doylestown uh, campus. Uh, also, uh, as Jerry announced uh, a couple days ago, we were so excited uh, that next week we're going to be resuming live services at all three campuses. We're, we're going to continue doing the online services from our three campuses uh, for those who aren't comfortable or ready to, to come in person yet. But we're gonna, there, there will be people meeting together next week, and we are so excited about that. Uh, but there's lots of details that you need to know when it comes to that because of all the safety measures that we're going to be putting uh, in place. But those details are campus-specific. So what we're going to do is each campus is going to release a video this next week to, to walk through what it's going to look like, because it's going to look a lot different than it normally looks. But, but we are still really excited about it. So make sure you look out for a video from the campus uh, that you attend, and we'll be excited to, to see people and to worship together uh, next week. And again, if you can't make it next week, we're going to continue the, the online streaming, but it's going to come from the three different campuses. It's not going to be on Doylestown's Facebook page. It's going to be on each of the individual campuses' Facebook pages, so be aware of that uh, as well. But now we're going to get back into uh, worshiping together, and uh, Joe, who's actually a graduating senior from our Wise with Campus, is going to lead us in this next song. Uh, so let's all lean in and worship God together.
How could I be lost when you have called me down? You chase me down. You seek me out. How could I be lost when you have called me down? You chase me down. You seek me out. How could I be lost when you have called me down? Like a tidal wave Dashing over me As you need to be me here Your love is me Like a hurricane That I can't escape Living through the atmosphere Your love is me Your love First, we'd like to offer our sincere congratulations for your graduation. And I don't think anybody's going to argue the fact that this is going to be a year that no one's going to forget the year you graduated. If we had to offer some simple advice, it would be simply this. My advice would be to remember the gift that you've been given. That's the gift of the gospel. The gospel is something you should stand on you should share with people as you go through life because the world is going to try to take that away from you. Thanks. And I would just say wherever the next phase of your life takes you, just stay connected to church. And if that means that you go somewhere else, then find a new church, get in a small group, stay connected with other believers and people that share your faith. Wish you all the best of luck. God bless you. Too bad of the situation, sorry for the situation and so on like that, and I hope that each one of you make the best of your life. And I'm sorry that I didn't get to kiss everybody <laughs> off. off. <laughs> <laughs> this old senior would like to congratulate all the seniors from the high school and for 2020. I'm, I'm sorry that you can't have your parties and so forth like normal and walking across the stage and so on, but. That's okay, you'll be fine. Uh, take it from this guy, this young guy here. Uh, I graduated in 1952. If you want to try to figure out the math, I'm 86. Uh, when you go out into your new phase of life, the biggest thing you gotta do is keep, keep yourself focused on the Lord Jesus, because he will get you through whatever comes up. Uh, that's the best thing I can tell you to do. I was. I was late getting mine started. I, I didn't do that for a few years, but once I got to it, I'd, how'd I ever live through it? So I'm so glad the Lord spoke to me and said, you're mine. And I pray that to be your, uh, your way of life also. And you all have a good time. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, graduating class. I am very proud of you and I uh, appreciate all you have done to uh, graduate this year since it's a, been a very rough year. Um, I'm supposed to give some kind of advice for you. Um, my advice would be read God's Word, memorize some of it, and I would say think about it, and I would say fall in love with the author of the book. I got a Bible when um, I was a teenager and there was uh, things that they wrote in the front of it that was done back then and the Bible that I got was the uh, King James Version uh, Schofield Reference Bible I thought I was just great I got 
the main topic, Bible. And uh, it's through the years have helped me quite a bit. And I um, have learned quite a bit over my 75 years. So I wish you all the very best and congratulations again. Hello, graduating class. So glad to be giving you a message and I'll try to remember the things I want to say to you. You're graduating this year, you're closing one chapter of your life, and, but then you'll have another chapter when you go out and get to college. And uh, always remember to trust in the Lord, thank Him for giving you life, and depend on Him to direct your life. My mom always told me, she said, observe, listen, and uh, learn all you can learn in your life, in your school, when you're going to school. And you know, that's been a very good policy for me to go by. And said to observe, listen, and learn everything you can. So I would advise you to do that. Put God first in your life. Ask Him to direct your life. And that will be a big, big help for you. And uh, I wish all of you the best. And uh, Happy to be talking to you. Marley, our granddaughter, is graduating this year, too, and we're very, very proud of her and pleased with her and all of our grandchildren, for that matter. So I just pray that God will bless you richly. And that's all I could tell you a lot more, but that's all I have to say. I want to congratulate the class of 2020, especially my daughter, granddaughter, Marley. And I wish you the best in life. No matter which way you go, keep the Lord in mind and and uh, keep yourself focused on what you want to do. And and that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Hey, church. I just want to thank. First of all, I'm just going to call them our senior seniors. I want to thank them for taking a minute to share some advice uh, to our. Uh, graduating seniors this year 2020 uh, I really appreciate what they have to say they have some really great advice in there and, and again a uh, big shout out to them and I appreciate them doing that now today and, and I love the fact that I get to speak today uh, on our graduation uh, Sunday and I want to thank Joe Reeves for coming in and singing for us today one of our uh, graduates from uh, Wadsworth a lot of talent a lot of bright future out there but our whole graduating group this year, both high school and college, you have so much potential. There's so many things that, that with your life pointed in the right direction that God can use you to do. And I'm excited uh, to see how that unfolds over the years uh, to come. Uh, but I want to uh, thank the parents out there too and congratulate them uh, for a job well done. I mean, not just getting through high school, but some of you out there, you have college grads and way to go, way to stick in there. Well, today, I get the opportunity to speak to, there'll be some high school students out there, there's some high school grads, uh, there's some uh, college grads out there, uh, and then uh, I'm going to speak to everybody else that's still breathing out there. So you just, you just pay attention and we're going to learn something. And today, I'm going to talk on right response. Now, there is, there is a correct response to situations, uh, to things that are happening in our lives, uh, to choices we make. And I know in my own life, uh, there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. Uh, and I've done it wrong a bunch of times. I've had the wrong response. Uh, it's usually flared up during traffic jams or any time I'm trying to maneuver through and just get a little bit farther ahead uh, in traffic, I tend to have some wrong responses. Uh, there's uh, conversations where uh, maybe uh, I just get real aggressive uh, with my opinion. I know that's hard for you to believe and I have the wrong response. Uh, there's times when I get my feelings hurt, uh, and I have the wrong response. Now, before all of you pile on me, uh, this is what I want you to do. Uh, if you've done that, I want you to just go to your little pad right now and put me too. That's therapy for you. That'll help you. Just go ahead and just, I mean, don't tell us your story. We don't have time for that. You don't have time for all my wrong responses either. That would be a sermon series in itself. But go ahead, put me too. Now, there are times when I've gotten it right. Uh, there, and, and it seems that as I go through life and gather more time and gather more information and, and grow a little deeper spiritually, I start to make 
uh, better right responses. And so uh, there are a couple, and I'm not even going to share with you all of those. There's just so, so many of them of me getting it right. Uh, so if you're out there and you know that you're in a spot where you could have had the wrong response, but you've made the right one, just put praise the Lord right there. You just, just type that in. Just praise the Lord, because, man, without his help, we would just consistently make wrong responses. And so today I want to talk to you about responses. I want to give you a couple things to think about, uh, because there's certain triggers that happen in our lives, certain warnings that we get in life that we're about to make a wrong response. Uh, the other night, uh, and I think probably everybody out there has experienced this now with the new fire alarms that we have in our homes, there's a battery backup. And when that battery starts to go dead, there's this chirping sound that starts, and it is annoying. And it just goes on, and it just goes on, and it just goes on. Uh, well, the other night, we had one of them go start that chirping. And fortunately, it was upstairs, and I sleep downstairs, so I had a lot less interest in solving that problem. It was 10 o'clock at night, uh, but, uh, but Hannah goes, Dad, this thing is chirping. I said, well, okay, well, it's just warning us that the battery's dead. That's all it is. She goes, yeah, but you can't sleep during it. I said, okay, well, let's take it out. We took it out, and guess what? It's about 10, 10 11 o'clock at night, but we have no 9-volt battery to solve this chirping. And so it just had to go on and go on and go on. But it was warning us that there was a battery, and, then, and this thing was, and, and we were headed in dangerous territory because the fire alarm wasn't working. You have certain triggers in life, too, that tell you you're about to make a wrong response. I want to give you some of those so you'll pay attention to it. Uh, here's one of them. Nobody will find out. You just, you're about to make a bad response when you start telling yourself, well, nobody's going to find out. Uh, there's, you know, one time isn't going to hurt. And you're about to make a bad response to something, and you're about to, instead of making the right response, so you just watch these warning signs that go out there. And these two travel together. I'm old enough to do whatever I want, and it's my life, and I'll do what I want. Those two things travel together. And you have to watch that, because oh, that can lead you into a, into a bad response or the wrong response. And our goal today is to talk about making right responses because that is what God would love for you to do is just to learn and improve making better right responses. Here's another one you got to watch out. Uh, somebody else will. You go through life and think that somebody else is going to do it. That's a wrong response often. That somebody else is going to take care of that. Somebody else is going to do that. Somebody else is going to care for the poor. Somebody else is going to talk to them about Jesus. And so what happens is that you, it moves us to cause us to have a wrong response. Uh, and here's, this is a really important one, uh, and it's a little bit darker. It's a lot darker. But it's important for me to talk about this. I'm so depressed. I'm so upset. I'm so lonely. I'm so broken, I'm so hurt, I'm so messed up, I'm going to take my life. That is always a wrong response. And today, it's important for us to speak to that too. Because as you go through life and move through life, uh, it's, it's easy for us to feel isolated and to move in that direction. And it's too dark, and it's too dangerous and it's important for us when that's happening that we make the right response, that we make the right response. So here's some questions for you to ask yourself. Here's some real important questions to ask yourself as you're moving towards what do we want to do? We want to make the right response. I love questions. Here's a couple of them. Uh, do I need more time? Do I need more time? You're about to make a decision. You're about to respond to something. Maybe you don't have enough information. And you know, senior, especially from high school, Everybody's asking, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? <laughs> Come on. Man, I just graduated from high school. How do I know what I'm going to do with the rest of my life? I have so much out in front of me. Well, you, what's going to happen is you're going to gather more information, and you're going to keep making better responses. So ask yourself before you're about to respond, you know what, maybe I need to give this more time. Maybe I need to give uh, you find more information. Uh, will this make sense tomorrow? That's a great question to ask yourself. That after you've responded this way, ask yourself down the road, will this make sense? 
uh, ask yourself this question when it's time to make a, a response to something. Uh, will this be a story that I can't wait someday to tell my kids? Take that question on. You take that through college, all the, the decisions and responses and, that you're going to make to all the things that go on during that four years of college, or it's supposed to be four years. Some of us that are really smart take five, okay? So, but as you go through there, uh, you have to ask yourself, is this going to be a story that I can't wait to tell my kids someday? That will help you make better responses to all the things that are coming at you in life. Um, would this please God? Would this please my parents? Uh, will this lead to me to a better place in life? These are great questions to ask. Uh, and, and the last two are going to lead us to walking through and talking about uh, responses. Uh, will this violate my conscience? That when something's violating your conscience, something's going on. That when you're, I found in life as I travel, that when I was making right responses to things, my conscience was really quiet. It was, I mean, it was really engaged in where I was going, and there was a lot of energy and a lot of excitement towards it. But when I was about to make the wrong response, it was the opposite. My conscience was pulling back on what was going on, and there's a part of me pushing forward, and there was a tug of war going on in my life. And so when we're ready to respond to something, it's important for us to watch that. And, and will this violate my conscience? If you're about to violate your conscience, man, pull back. Pull back. It's probably not the right uh, response. All right, and this isn't easy. I mean, there are so many choices that you're going to make as you travel through life. Uh, and this isn't easy, and you have to sort them through. This isn't easy like some of them. Uh, and some of them are easy, and a lot of them are hard, though. Uh, the other day I was driving down the road, and the sweet shop opened up. I go there about two times a year. Uh, and a lot of people, man, you know, they're really excited about the sweet shop. Uh, there's not a lot of social distancing going on at that place, man. People are just trying to get up to the front and get their ice cream. Well, I was driving, and there, was, and there wasn't anybody in line. Uh, of course, it was raining, but there wasn't anybody in line. I went through the drive through and I pulled up, and I get about two slush creams a year. And that's a slushy, and I always pray, just like you, that they'll put more ice cream in it than slush, okay? Now, you know you're in a good place when they give you more ice cream than they do slush. And so uh, I pulled up there. I said, hey, what kind? I knew exactly which one I was going to get. I pulled up and said, hey, I want a, uh, it's called a slush cream. And she goes, what flavor do you want? And like, cherry. That's it. I mean, if you're going to get a slush cream, it has to be cherry. I mean, if you're walking with God uh, and you want good things and you want God to shine down on your life, you get a cherry slushy. That's what you do. I got it, and it was real easy. They made it, and I want to brag on them. They put a lot of ice cream in it. And I pulled over. I actually stopped driving, pulled in a parking spot, sat there, and ate it. And when all the ice cream was gone, the last little bit of slush, I just poured it out. What's the point of that? It doesn't have any ice cream. But that was an easy decision. It was easy for me to go through there. But right responses aren't always easy. I mean, you got to process things, and there's, there's a way for us to journey towards making right responses. And I want to talk to you today about making the right responses in the area of relationships. And the tension that happens in our life, it's always going to be there. Why? Because you're always going to have a sin nature. There's always a, your flesh that pushes and pulls. There's always all kinds of decisions to make. Uh, there's cultural things that take place. You're walking on a new campus. There are phases of life that you go through. Then each phase brings on its set of issues and its set of responses. And you're walking out of the high school campus where you kind of know everybody and you're walking on a college campus and you're going to start creating new friendships and you're going to start looking for new directions in life and new careers and a new life mate and all that, you know, uh, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and so uh, as you go into there, that's a whole nother phase itself. For the, co for the college grads, I mean, you're going to go into the workforce and you're going to be making some new friendships in the, in the work area. And some of you are coming out of high school and you're going to go right into your career and way to go, you know. But you're going to go into that career and you're going to start sorting out new friendships and new invitations to go do stuff. And you have to figure all that kind of stuff out. And so it's not easy. 
uh, we think of, and they're not going away. Uh, there's stories in the Bible. Joseph is one of them. Man, it's a great read. Joseph always had challenges and he had to respond to them, but he made right responses. Joseph is the story of a young guy who made right choices all the way through and he was making them clear to the end of his life, making right choices to the challenges that come. And man, that's my prayer for every one of you out there, that his life comes and, okay, now I've got to respond to what's going on because to sit there and absolutely do nothing, maybe you give it a little more time. But some things need responded to, and you need to respond to them correctly. And so so Joseph did that, but then you think about Moses. I mean, Moses actually knew the plan of God, that God was going to release the people out of Egypt, but then he kills an Egyptian. That was not God's plan, but he responded that way. It was a wrong response to the plan God had for him. So even when you know the plan, sometimes you don't know the timeline. So see, this thing's tricky, and Moses messed that one all up, and he battled with that his whole life, even towards the end of his life. God was telling him to do this, and he responds in anger, and he does something else. Right responses, they're going to be our life challenge that lies out before us, and there's another reason too. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 tells us this, Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking for someone to devour. You know how he devours you? It's by getting you to make wrong, wrong responses. That you look at it and you respond the wrong way to it. So today, uh, I'd like to help you with this as you go uh, through life and begin these new uh, phases of life. And, And the other people, you know, we're all listening to this. I need to hear this too. Every one of us are going to be responding to something today. Tomorrow, you're going to be responding to something again. Man, let's respond the right way. I believe you want to do that. I want to do that. So let me talk to you a little bit about us doing that. First of all, relationships. I wish I had other topics. This thing could go on forever, right responses to all the different things in life. But today, I want to hone in on relationships because uh, relationships are so important in our life. Here's three of them I want to talk about. Relationships with friends. I want to encourage you to to make the right response when it comes to friendships, to friendships. Proverbs uh, 4, verses 13 through 15 says, hold on to instruction. See, what he's doing is he's he's saying here, uh, don't, don't, watch out, don't violate the the instruction that you know is right. Don't ignore it uh, for a moment and get yourself in trouble. It says, hold on to this instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is life. It is life. And so this is part of building a great life. And Proverbs is leading us that way, a book of wisdom. Do not set your foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. What he's saying, don't partner up with them. Don't partner with the wrong people. Make a right response as you develop. And friendships are awesome. They're amazing. They're God's gift to us, especially when you do them right. Man, who wants to find themselves in places in life and not have friendships. And the same thing is true of of negative friendships. We have to guard against those. So uh, in our life, man, let's work towards developing right friends. Avoid it. What he's saying is, man, stay away from the wrong people. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way. So I want to encourage every high school grad, every college student, man, watch your friendships. The Bible gives us a little more instruction on that. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, Do not be misled. Don't be fooled on this one. Bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. And so as you go forward, wherever you start to develop those friendships, whether it's in the club when you're working out or all the different places, uh, work all different places that you start the journey of developing, the seed is being planted towards uh, friendships, uh, pay close attention to that one. Pay close attention to that one. See, the quality of friends affect the quality of our lives. The quality of your friendships will affect the quality of your lives. So respond correctly uh, in the area of friendships, man, and you'll never regret it. Here's the second one, uh, and these are all pretty simple. Uh, respond, the right response to family, the right response to family. I know, I mean, I get it, you know, 
I graduated uh, from high school, went to school in Virginia, and there are lots of things that go on in life that if you're not careful, uh, you can disconnect yourself from family. I just want to encourage to all the high school grads, all the college students, don't disconnect yourself uh, from family. Uh, that's not a right response. And I know that you're moving into these new phases in life, uh, but don't leave behind really important relationships. And family is one of them. Uh, Proverbs talks about this. And what it says is to watch out because, you know, like it talks about how words kill and how words give life. I want to encourage you as you go into these new phases and stuff, why don't you reach back to your parents and why don't you give them words of encouragement? Why don't you every so often, man, text them or call them. Call them is even better. They love it. Or even videoing yourself and sending it to them and telling them thank you. But maintain these relationships. That's a right response. Search for your independence. That's a right response. But not so independent that you've isolated them from your life. I'm just telling you, I think you uh, that if you follow this advice, you'll end up uh, in a better place. See, uh, you know, uh, it, don't treat it this way. Uh, treat it, don't treat it like, like your parents just didn't have any other way of spending all their money and all their time. They did have other ways to spend it, but they wanted to spend it on you, on you. So don't leave them behind. Uh, give them room to be part of your life. You won't regret it. It's a really positive, right response. Here's the third one, uh, your faith, your faith. When it comes to your faith, I mean, you have choices. And, and you know, you're a young adult and you get to make them. Uh, you can walk away or you can walk towards God. And really, there's nobody on the planet that can stop you. I mean, we can't handcuff you and bring you into church. We're not going to do that. And that's not what God wants anyway. God wants you to willingly walk towards him. That's the right response. And if you've been in church for any length of time, you already know this. They've talked to you about this. You've been in church, and church has talked to you about this. And everybody around you in this area has told you how important faith is. But now it's yours. The ball's been handed off to you. Which way will you run? Which way will you go? Uh, and I hope that you'll go towards God. I want to read a couple verses for you. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. It says, you must pay the most careful attention. Look at that. The writer's saying, you got to pay attention to this one. You don't just naturally make the right decisions in this area. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift. We do not drift. You know how drift thing goes. A drift is not like a tsunami. A tsunami comes in, man, you see it coming, it comes fast, and it comes aggressively. Drifting is a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and you, all of a sudden you're somewhere you didn't even plan on being. Don't drift from him. And in your, make the right decisions in this relationship. And maybe you even, you even struggled. Now, I don't even know how to navigate that one. Well, just because you don't quite know how to navigate it yet doesn't mean you give up on it. Don't give up on it. And you keep seeking advice. And you don't, just, you don't learn how to do it by never walking through the doors again or never picking up the word of God. Or never placing yourself in an environment where you can learn more about God. And so Psalm 63 verse 1 says, You, God, are my God. Now watch what he does here. This is the right response. Earnestly I seek you. Earnestly I seek you. Right response is an action towards God. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. Acts, uh, maybe sometime you go take a look at it. Acts chapter 16, verse 14. In one verse, we see a movement that takes place and what happens in Lydia's life. There is the teaching of the word of God. In this one verse, there is the teaching of the word of God. There is then 
the responding to the word of God, the teaching, the listening, then the Holy Spirit works, and then Lydia responds to the word of God and gives her life to God. Where did that take place? She placed herself under the teaching of the word of God, placed herself in a place where she could listen to the word of God and the Holy Spirit could work. It's important for you to be in a place of worship so that all of these things can happen and you can respond correctly. Don't you, don't you take worship, don't you take being in church and kind of take it and put it on the side like it's insignificant. It is right up there with one of the most important things that you will do as you move forward into the future of your life. And that is to maintain your relationship with God and to stay consistent in your worship. All right, those are just a couple couple words that, that I want to share with you about responding correctly. And I think that if I had time, I would love to give you one more uh, F. That's not like a grade. I collected enough of those. We don't need to talk about those. I always considered them one-legged A's, but my mom never viewed it that way. The F that I would give you is your future, your future. And I'm not talking about all the things you'll do in your life. I'm talking about it in the context of relationship. If you marry someday, marry somebody who loves God, who loves God. That is the right response to finding a future mate in life. Hey, just a couple things for you. Just know uh, that God is for you. He just is. That he's for you. He's cheering you on. And this church is cheering you on. And we are excited about your future. And we're even more excited about the, the thought of you doing it right. So make right responses. And when you don't make the right one, ask God to help you clean it up. Don't let it lead you to another one. None of us are perfect. None of us. But let's work towards making right responses. Let me pray for everybody out there today. Father, today I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you that, that it's really clear that responses are so important in life. Man, I look, at, I look at Joseph's life and I admire how he could just make positive, right responses to all the things that God sent him. And Father, I pray that for every young person out there listening. That, Father, that they would be the next Joseph. That as things come into their life, that they make right responses. That, Father, that their journey would just be a journey of drawing closer to you. And, Father, you created them to do great things. You also created them to love you and to worship you and to seek you. I pray that they would do that. And Father, again, I pray for every parent that's out there. And, and Father, I just pray your peace on them. Father, I just pray your, your joy on them. And Father, I pray that they understand how much you love their son and their daughter too. And so Father, as we go forward, help us as a church to always be inspiring to make right decisions and to chase your heart. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. And give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face.
church i love that song don't you love that but we're not done yet uh, i want to ask you uh, we have um, someone who's a part of our crossroads family ben and Bree. Uh, they gave birth to their son this week uh, chance and i think a picture of him is going to pop up on the screen i'm kind of in the blind but i got a thumbs up uh, he's at children's hospital in the icu area and uh, and he's uh, he needs your prayer uh, and, and I know that God is for him. And, and I want Ben and Bree to know that, that we are for him too. And that we're going to lift them up in prayer. And that we're going to pray God's blessing on him and, and on them as they go through this. And so as a church, let's do that. Uh, let's pray for them. Let's commit today that we will be praying uh, for chance. Uh, that God will touch his little body uh, and give it strength. And then let's pray for our seniors, both college and high school. And let's pray for all of our young people during this transition, uh, that God will bless them and that God will clearly show to them and they will know that he is for them. I love that thought. You hold on to that thought all day today, that he is for you. And then you come out at three o'clock and I know kids have nap times. So I'm taking a little nap in the car and you fly by here at 3 o'clock, uh, and you give a shout out. Let's not be people who from the couch cheer for our young people. Let's be people who show up uh, when the call goes out, and they come through, and they say, way to go. Because we know uh, what, uh, what great energy there is and what a bright future there is in being young and having so much life in front of them. So let's come by and cheer them on a little bit today. Let me close this in prayer. Uh, then don't you jump off because uh, we have a uh, video uh, the little uh, salute to all of our uh, graduates you won't want to miss it uh, uh, that seven minutes of getting a refill on the coffee can wait all right father thank you again that we could be here today uh, we look forward to next week being in all the different places and 
and back in the building and begin our journey towards normal worship. And Father, we thank you for the ability to be able to do it digitally. And Father, uh, we pray uh, for your blessing upon chance that, Father, uh, that you just touch his little body and that, Father, you continue to fill that room up every day with your presence. And, and Father, I pray for every high school student again who's graduated that, that Father, they, they truly understand that they belong to you and what great things you have for them. And to the college students who finally got on the other side of that and graduated and now begin new careers and, and, and new next steps in life, Father, uh, be with them and guide them. Uh, may all of us love you more and seek you more. That is our prayer. Uh, that is the cry of our hearts. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the video.
everyone. We are so glad that you joined us for online church today. We hope that you enjoyed the worship and were encouraged by the message. We just want to remind you that you can find more information about our church on our website, crossroadsonline.tv, or our app, or our social media pages. Have a great day.